Hey guys, welcome to another video. Let's talk about Tendrake Robin issue number 10. Written by Megan Fitzmartin and drawn by Nicola Krismigi. So in the previous issue, Tim and Batwoman had a disagreement regarding the Chaos Monster case, which led Batwoman to venture out alone. Tim attempts to apologize and try to find Batwoman, but he ended up being overwhelmed by the Chaos Monsters. And that's where we are. Now Tim finds himself waking up in a maze, fully aware that he must locate Batwoman, aka Kate Kane. As he cautiously navigates the treacherous mage, he inadvertently triggers some dangerous traps. I guess Tim is in real trouble. Well, we catch up with Bernard, who's knocking on Tim's door because he knows Tim's secret, and he's eager to have a conversation. However, he's interrupted by Pi, an uninteresting member of the Marino cast, who's just uninteresting, who tells Bernard about Tim and Robin being in the same room, which they weren't. It was more like Tim was undressing and his Robin costume was right on the table and Pi walked in. It was kind of just so much stupid. Anyway, he informs Bernard about this and then Bernard just laughs in his face. Then Bernard hears about the rumors of the Chaos Monsters and Pi tells him that one of the other Marina crew tell, told him about this. So he goes to them, but they were told by another person. So he goes to them, and but they were told by this other dude. So he finally goes to them. No more run around, that's just it. He tells them about the Chaos Monsters, which is just a little information. But Bernard's like, I don't have a bad feeling about this. Anyway, we travel back to Tim as he continues frantically just running through the maze and encounters someone who calls on his name and he looks and it's his dad. When Tim tries to embrace his dad, he receives an unexpected shove, which is just hilarious if this comic had more moments like this i would actually read it more people would read it except it's cancelled this is the final issue guys anyway it turns out this mysterious figure is wearing a hallucinogenic mask and he taunts tim claiming that he lacks a family and never truly belonged however we know that tim is a part of bad family he has connected to the teen titans in fact didn't he you know kind of lead that team at some point whatever he also was a part of the Young Justice with his friends, but I guess that doesn't count. He never had to fail, he never belonged. Anyway, the mysterious figure reveals his desire for Tim to join this chaos cult. Oh my gosh, is Tim to join? Oh, tension. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we shed some light on Kate's actions and the chaos men's pursuits. Most of what we've seen in like the previous two issues had been like kind of set up, but like not like careful in a way that it actually made sense but we get it in this whole this dude monologue to us so kate was just going around defeating chaos men and chaos monsters whatever and so batwoman tried to lure his son away from the chaos men but the son couldn't cope so i guess he died it's not really explained he doesn't explain it but we just had to read between what he's saying to actually understand it so i guess any member of the cult just dies without their help which is just hilarious oh my gosh i love this this is so funny however the details remains of how she actually lost her memory he doesn't explain that and i read through this like three times could someone just explain to me how kate lost her memories in the first place i feel like i'm missing something but they don't do a good job at explaining it anyway um we just moved past but that um the cult leader shows batwoman on a slab and he says tim needs to kill her or whatever what is even happening here i don't understand what the like why does this need to happen this this feels like at 11 you should have just led up to this nothing is like what is even happening Anyway, uh, whatever. Tim obviously doesn't kill her because, you know, whatever. Their family, whatever. Faced with an impossible choice, Tim just takes a daring step. He declares to the others that he will shoulder the burden of Kate's crimes, making her untouchable because harming her would be like harming him, whatever. It's just... He's just hoping to shield Kate from the cold, hoping that they'll buy this warped logic. And they kind of don't. I don't even know. Okay, so amidst all of this, Bernard meets with other characters from the book, including Darcy Sparrow, who's in the hospital. Don't worry, I'll come back to her. She's not, 
I have some wrath for her. Steph, Case, and the Detective Williams, I'm pretty sure. I wrote this in my notes, but I don't even know what the dude's name is. I'm pretty sure it's Williams, but I'm not 100% certain. However, Bernard's conversation with Batman proved to be very obnoxious. Lacking any... Bernard's kind of annoying in the series. I hope you guys realize that. Anyway, meanwhile, we jump over to Tim. He found himself drugged, and I guess he was drugged between panels. Extra layer of nauseous, really. Lacking just anything. What is happening? Okay, so the cult leader like recites the creed out loud, and it's just, oh my gosh. Things really seem down, and then the Bat family and the Marina members burst through a wall, led by Bernard wielding a sledgehammer. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, okay, their sure in chaos brings just the amount of insanity that I would expect from Megan Fitzmartin. And uh, Bernard embraces Tim, and they never had the conversation in this book about like Tim being Robin, which is that could have been interesting, but whatever. Tim realizes that he's not hallucinating, even if that he originally thought that he was hallucinating in this moment. But everything is sincere, and you see all the Bat family members and, you know, the Marina crew just bust up the members of the cult. And I guess they can fight, but I don't remember them being able to fight or do anything. Mostly, they just spend time just complaining about, oh no, the Marina is going out of order. All I can remember from the Marina team is that them just crying about the Marina, about nobody protecting the Marina, and just like, oh, Robin's protecting the Marina. That's all I remember from these characters. I can't name any n number of them without looking at my freaking notes or without looking at how oh, these characters don't have any personality. Um, but at first I actually thought Tim was hallucinating because you see Sparrow here and like shouldn't she be in the hospital? She was shot in the previous issue and I do remember that. But I guess Megan Fitzmartin doesn't or maybe she doesn't care. Or maybe the artist is making the mistake. I'm going crazy. Yes, I am. Oh my gosh. But one of the leader himself tries to escape and like, oh my gosh, it's... It's so weird because the leader tries to escape, but like Tim catches out to him, and like he and he unmasks him because he was still wearing that hallucinogen mask, and he realized that's the previous guy who like thought a Batwoman like had her by the throat and tried to get her in the previous issue. Like he was seriously just the same guy who like said thank you, Robin. For getting me this child killer. And it's the same guy, but like, this doesn't do anything, to be honest, because we don't know who this guy is. I don't even know his name. I don't even know what's going on, to be honest, at, like 20%. But Tim's narration is like, how he's glad he has this family, his Marina family, his bad family. He f he's glad he found a new life in the Marina. I'm just like, I can't remember any of these characters' names. I can't remember Tim having like, any meaningful like, connection with these characters. They're just so bland and. There's too many characters in this book, which I don't have any care about, that I just kind of feel like are awkwardly just squeezed in this whole book. It's frustrating. Anyway, we get like more narration about like Tim reflecting now how he allowed external factors like Gotham, Batman, and the world to find him. But he realized he's never truly alone and embraces the notion of acceptance in love. It's like a really terrible message for Tim to learn because he's already gone through that to be honest. He was a part of a team called Teen Titans and I read that series. It's pretty good in my opinion. The Jeff John series and then you have John Justice which he kind of led this team of like teenage superheroes or like young teenage superheroes who weren't members of Teen Titans or just kind of wanted to hang out as a team which was kind of a fun book. It was by T Peter David. I recommend it. It's a pretty fun book to be honest. But it really doesn't, this doesn't, this isn't Tim because we already went through all that and he's never really truly been alone. The only time I can say like Tim's been alone was when, well, two times when he stopped being Robin and when he was going through the whole Red Robin thing of trying to actually locate Batman because he thought he wasn't dead, 
which was a kind of interesting story. Megan Fitzmartin doesn't know that, though. Anyway, um, we see Tim back at the marina, surrounded by Bernard and all the other members. And with that, the series ends. And frankly, I'm glad about it, because this series has been kind of bad from, like, start to finish. It's not like this series has, like, a kind of through line of, like, things leading up to one another. It's kind of just, like, things happening out of order. And I kind of figured that most of the stuff was going to be not connected at all, but Megan Fitzmartin kind of, like, creates, like, a kind of Frankenstein kind of monster on which to, to connect these events, which doesn't really work because some of these events just seem out of, out of left field. What is even happening? And honestly, the first such issues was just bad art. It really doesn't work. And this series didn't really live up to my expectations because, which were already low because I read Young Justice before this and I was just like, this, this is terrible. I just didn't really like it. The characters just seem wrong and it doesn't really seem like it had a lot of love for like Peter David's series, which was good in my opinion. It was actually, it was actually worth it. Other than that, I don't really have that many other thoughts. The side characters were uninteresting. They didn't catch my interest. Tense character development left much to be desired. Also, Tim's lesson about family, about finding a new one, didn't really work because he was part of the Teen Titans Young Justice. And they really fell off when they did that. And the lines about him, like, accepting his new self about, like, him finding a new family was really off because he's been a part of a family. He just... DC doesn't really know what to do with him when he's a part of that family. That's the problem. And other than that, I just hopefully hope that Tim Drake gets put with a better writer. Heck, even let Chip Sardarsky like, write a Robin series. I'm fine with that. That dude actually writes it 10 better than like Megan does. <sighs> other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to... Go check me out on any of my socials, link in the description below. If you want to support me, you can go to Patreon or like any of the other sites in my link below. Links, I should say. Sorry, I'm really tired from making this video. I really hope to cover more good comic books, but hopefully, hopefully, I will at some point. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.